All right, what's going on guys? Trev back again, here to bring you another video. This one's gonna be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of The Strain television series. This week we got to see season one, episode three, which was called Gone Smooth. As always, my reviews do contain spoilers, so if you guys have not seen this episode yet, you may want to watch it first before watching my review. Now that said, um, so I want to apologize, wasn't able to get this one out on Sunday night, been a little bit backed up with making videos, just because of Comic-Con and all the stuff that was happening this weekend, kind of burnt myself out just making a lot of Comic-Con related videos, and finally got a chance to go ahead and watch The Strain today and do a review for it for you guys. Now, this show, um, it, it, this is a weird one. I mean, it's only getting from the wiki from uh, FX. Now, FX is a network that they put together some really great stuff, but they usually tend to not get that many views in terms of their shows. Uh, it's only getting in the 2 million range uh, for The Strain, and I think it's a better show than that. For people that like horror, it's a much better show than that, and it deserves to get a lot more. So let's hope that The Strain it doesn't just get canceled after the first season, and let's hope more people check it out more people uh, give it a chance and realize how uh, freaky and, uh, and and just really well done it is. It's a really, really great series. I can say after three episodes now, it's probably, aside from True Detective, which was amazing, uh, this is the next best show I've seen so far this year. New show, in terms of new shows. So, uh, so far anyway. So, this episode again, just like last week's episode, we've got a new kind of pacing. It's not as, there's not as much happening as there was in the premiere, but of course that's to be expected with the premiere of them trying to grab our attention. Uh, week to week though, there's enough in each episode to keep me very interested and very entertained. Now the one thing about this show that's a little bit strange to me is how much it focuses on the um, the victims or the ones that are turning into the vampires uh, affected by the strain. Um, it, we have a lot of scenes that are focused on them, focused on their families, focused on what's happening with the different characters. Like, for example, the one rocker who's got the uh, the long black wig on, and he's really starting to transform, but he still hasn't. He's still free, and everything's okay with him in terms of, um, you know, his surroundings. He hasn't been put in captivity or anything like that, like the pilot was, who we just saw at the end of this episode, um, basically had completed his transformation, I guess, and was completely transformed into one of the, I guess, vampire, mutant vampires, I guess I would say. Um, and we got to see kind of the first uh, fight scene go down at the end of this episode, which was really exciting. Very, very exciting. It's it, it's a weird one because it's, it's gross, it's horrifying, and it's exciting all at the same time with an emphasis on the gross. <laughs> Because it is. Uh, the, the ones that turn from the strain, they're much more disgusting and scary than like your atypical zombie or anything else I'm really used to. They're very freaky looking and very scary. And um, in this one, I thought it was really weird the way to see the uh, the pilot who has now turned fully into the mutant vampire type thing as he's as he's attacking the others. He kind of kind of holds back for a minute and then he spews his tongue out like a, like some kind of you know, like, like he's kind of warming it up and then boom, like it snaps out to, you know, like a, like a frog's tongue or something. Yeah, something like that where it's just kind of, you know, like boom, boom, just like out like that, like kind of snaps out. And, um, you know, they're, they're definitely a lot tougher than your atypical zombie or anything like that uh, to take on. You know, you have three people here going up against one of them and they're having a lot of trouble even though they don't really know what they're dealing with. It's kind of the first one they've dealt with in this capacity with Jim, Ephraim, and uh, Nora. Um, and they almost don't make it, but they're able to, at the end, Ephraim's able to put the thing down. But it was a really, really exciting ending to see. And throughout the episode, too, there was a lot of really creepy, freaky scenes. I'm telling you, this is one of the best horror series you could, you could probably watch for people that really like to be scared, really like that uh, that horror kind of stuff. Uh, in addition to that, as well as getting to see a lot of the others, I really liked um, the additional scenes with the with the rat catcher guy. Now that his, uh, the, the police officer that, that goes around New York and he's catching rats basically, um, his storyline has not yet converged with the others, but uh, we got to see with him, you know, a whole bunch, 
running out as he's kind of outside standing there thinking, what the hell is going on? Um, so I'm interested to see what happens when his storyline kind of comes in with the others. Also with uh, Abraham, we didn't get to see too much with him as well. A little bit, but he's basically letting them know what they have to do, and he gets a list that he needs to find out who was on the uh, the plane, who's been released, so he can go down and try to stop this thing, which, I mean, I think you can you know clearly tell is not going to work no matter what. Um, and then in addition to that, we had some more stuff with um, Thomas uh, Elcorist, who's who's the uh, the smooth face played by Richard Samuel. He's he's the the smooth faced uh, vampire. Uh, that's I want to call him like a leader. He's not the overall leader because the master is the overall leader, but he's like his lieutenant, I guess, or or, or field leader type guy, where he's doing all kinds of different stuff and uh, you know helping their side out. Um, and, you know, everything to do with them is really freaky. He's a scary character, and I, I like the intro scene in this episode where it shows him putting on his face makeup, and we get the idea that he, he is, has been fully transformed, but yet he, he puts on his makeup and everything. He's no different than any of the others. He's just probably older and, and, and stronger, I would say, and he has to dress himself up to look with makeup, to look human, um, which is really, really freaky. So in addition to all of that really freaky, crazy, you know, uh, gross and, and exciting stuff, uh, we also got some good character development in this one. Um, Ephraim doesn't get joint custody of his son, so that's pretty crushing for him, although I tend to think how much is it really going to matter when everything goes to hell and and this spreads because at this point they wouldn't be able to stop it and they're too strong you know the uh the the ones that turn from the strain they're 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 way too strong for them to contain it or stop it so we'll have to see what happens next and how this season ends up the last episode is called the master so i haven't read the actual book that this is based on or i think there's more than one books i guess i should say um, but I'm interested to kind of see where the series, like, like episode to episode, how, like where it finds its, its, its medium and, and at what time, you know, are we going to see by the end of the season, this outbreak just, just sweep across and, you know, and uh, kind of just go widespread? Is that going to be like a second season or third season type of thing? I'm really interested to see, you know, how that's going to go and how long it's going to take. Based on the pacing so far, it looks like we'll probably get through most of the first season just based on what we've seen already. Uh, without seeing any kind of, you know, hugely widespread, you know, thing like that, uh, which is cool because then we can kind of see the start of it from the beginning all the way through, um, you know, episode by episode as it becomes more and more widespread. So uh, aside from that, I mean, I think that's, uh, that's about all I really wanted to say about uh, this week's episode. It's really freaky, really exciting, and really, really well done. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I think for as a horror show... It's really, really scary. And my only nitpick is that I think sometimes it focuses on the ones that have changed a little bit too much, a little bit more than it needs to. I don't think we need to see that many scenes with them to get the idea of what's happening to them. And also because they're on the opposite side, how much are you going to show? You know, most of the time you'll get in a series, the good guys get focused on more than, you know, the bad guys, right? And this show, it's, it, it's almost like half and half if you consider any of the ones that are turning to be bad guys at this point, you know. Um, so let me know what you guys thought about this week's episode. Of course, uh, Sunday night will be episode four. So I'll check that out and I'll probably do a review of it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing reviews every week of The Strain going forward. I, I don't want to say that even though I think it's an amazing show, but I have to see how much interest. I'm definitely going to watch it no matter what. But whether or not I post the reviews is kind of, I'm kind of questioning it this time. I don't know how much interest there is out there so let me know what you guys think if you like these reviews if you want to see me continue please thumb them up below uh, like them please share them favorite them and uh, you know that's pretty much uh, all I got to say for this one so see you guys for the next one this is Trev saying peace